you're new to Hargreaves Lansdowne or you're thinking about opening an account with them, then this video is for you. In this video, we're gonna have a look through some of the features and functions of the website that this broker has that makes it, in my view, one of the best in the UK. We're also gonna look over my portfolio, we're gonna look at the returns that I've had in there, and we're gonna look through all the intricacies and the ins and outs about holding a portfolio within Hargreaves Lansdowne. If you've missed anything or you've got any questions about this platform, please drop them below and I will get back to you. So opening an account with Hargreaves Lansdowne is dead straightforward, so I'm not gonna go through that. I'm gonna assume that you can fill in some boxes. It is really straightforward. If you've got to the point whereby you now have an account, this is what it looks like. So once you set up an account, start deposited some money and started investing, this is what the landing page is gonna look like when you log onto it. As you can see, I've got two accounts. You're probably wondering, why have I got two accounts? I've got a stocks and shares ASA and I've got a fund and share account. That quite simply is because within Hargreaves Lansdowne, there's fees. There's no getting away from that. We all know that. It's 0.45% of the total holding in fees is paid over the course of a year and that's paid monthly. So there, it, it's not one of the cheapest platforms in the UK, that's for sure. But what it is, is it's one of the biggest, it's one of the most robust and you, you get what you pay for with this one. But because this is a previous ISA that I held, I can no longer add any cash into the ISA because it is a previous year. I've started a new ISA with a new account, so I can't put any more cash in. So in order to pay the fees, I have to set up a fund and share account. And then what happens is the fees from the ISA get taken from the fund and share account. The reason we do that, it's really important to do that because if you don't do that, when you run out of cash in your ISA, Hargreaves Lansdowne will start share, selling off some of your funds in order to pay for the fees. And that is the last thing you want. So in a minute, we'll, I'll show you how to make sure that the fees are being taken from an external account rather than selling off any of your funds. So this is a landing page. These are my two accounts that I have in it. So you click into that and it brings you to your portfolio. So this is my portfolio from a couple of years ago in the ISA that I had with Hargreaves Lansdowne. So I have got down here, we can see, or and up here, you've got a value. So this is the value of the total portfolio. So the total value of this portfolio right now is 12,948 pence. The total cash that I have on hand is four pounds and 87. So I typically pay around four pound a month in terms of fees for this account. So I only have got one month's worth of cash available within the ISA. Uh, but I've already started taking the cash out from the fund and share account rather than taking it out from there. So that's just a little reserve, a little emergency reserve, if you like. We've got a load of tabs across the top. We'll go into the relevant ones of those in a minute. But down here is the most important bit. These are all your holdings. So on the left-hand side, starting from the left, we've got the stock whatever business it is. So I've got I've got eight holdings, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, eight holdings within here. I've got five funds and I've got three shares. So we're gonna use Aviva as an example. So the stock is Aviva. Units held 179. So I've got 179 individual shares of Aviva. The value of each one of those shares at the moment is 407 pence. For some reason, the UK lists its share price in pence. I've never understood why. Actually, if you do know why, drop a comment below, help us all out. They've got 179 units of Aviva. The share price at the moment is 407 pence. That means the value of my holding at the moment is 729 pound and 43 pence. So that is the value of my holding right now. However, this next box, the cost box, tells you how much it cost me to buy those shares. So it cost me 533 pounds to buy 179 shares, which are now worth 729 pounds. That therefore represents a gain of 196 pounds or in a percentage term, just short of 37%. Now the important thing here actually is actually that includes reinvested dividends. So the original holding I probably bought for 480 quid, something like that. And this then cost, this cost adds the reinvested dividend cost. So if I've got 50 quid in dividends that I've had, that is now worth 533. And it has te te technically it's cost me 533 quid, but the, those reinvested dividends were free in themselves. Then on the right hand side, you have got this little button. If you press on that, that gives you the fact sheet. So clicking on that brings you to the fact sheet, which shows you all the information you could ever possibly want to know about Aviva. And that is one of the best things about Hargreaves Lansdowne. It's got some really good information 
on the businesses that are within there. Obviously, the bigger a business is, the more information there is, but there's loads of information, all sorts of different bit, bits of bobs um, about every business that, that, that Hargreaves Lansdowne hold. You don't get anywhere near as much information as this as you do with some of the other smaller, shall we say, platforms. You like free trade, trading two and two, stakey, toro, etc. This is a big boy. You get what you pay for again. Second button here is bell. The bell shape is create an alert so you can get a notification you can decide right the share is at 407 pence at the moment i want to get a notification if it drops to 350 so you click that you fill in what your parameters are in terms of your notification that you want to receive and you'll get a notification and the last one is place a deal or conversion it just means whether you want to buy some more of this stock so if you click on that it, the stock market's closed at the moment but you can place an order you can sell you can do what you want in terms of your holding there. It's the same with individual stocks as it is for funds in terms of all of that detail. I'm just gonna to touch on a couple of other little bits. If you notice here, there's a star. That means it is part of the wealth shortlist. That is basically, it's a bunch of funds that Hargreaves Lansdowne have done a load of research on and they're pushing. They basically think that there's gonna be some good returns in the future in terms of those funds and they are actively pushing the funds for whatever reason. So it may be that genuinely there is more potential within those or it may be that there is an incentive in the background for them to push it, who knows. Again, you've got units held, the price of each unit, the value therefore of the, what it's cost you to hold it and what your gain is in cash and what your gain is as a percentage. So it adds, so every single one of your holdings down here, it all gets added up down to the bottom and my value then of my total portfolio is 12,940 quid. The cost for me to invest that is 9,157. So it's 9,157 quid is what I've put in, but it's now worth 12,941, which is a gain obviously of 3,784 or 41%. So it's 41% of this portfolio. So if you've ever watched any of my videos before, you'll notice that nothing ever changes here. These are the funds and businesses that I hold, and I have no desire to sell them or change anything here for years, for decades probably. This is gonna to continue to grow and grow and grow, unless some of these businesses, businesses specifically, so I'm not gonna sell the funds, and, but unless some of these businesses fail to be able to prove to me that they can continue to grow revenue, grow profit in the future, nothing's gonna change here. So I'm not one of those YouTubers that's gonna be buying and selling stuff left, right and center just for the views. This is my portfolio. I'm a long-term investor that has been proven time and time again to deliver the best results in terms of a retail investor, which is what we're called, us amateurs. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. If it's been proven to be the best way, that's the way I'm gonna do it. So moving back to the top, we've got all these tabs. There's loads of things that we can do. And actually, this is one of the things, yes, it is great, Hargreaves lands out, but it can be a little bit daunting, actually. So the cash tab at the top basically gives you an overview of how much cash you've got. So that's cash you've got on hand in the account and also any loyalty and income bonuses that you've had. So you get income and loyalty bonuses for certain funds that you hold. It's an absolutely tiny amount, makes very little difference in terms of the total portfolio, but it's nice to have. Next tab then is income, and this shows you all of the, stands to reason, income that you've received. So the dividends that have been paid out. So I only have one dividend paying stock within this portfolio, which is Aviva, and that has paid three times this year. So that holding has paid out in January, May, and October. It has given me a total dividend income this year of just short of 50 quid for that one holding that I bought for 480 quid. That nearly represents a 10%, well it does, it, acts, it, it, it exactly represents a 10% yield on cost. So great returns, I do love Aviva. I've talked about it before, it is a great business. It then breaks it down over what that would have worked out monthly so you can see it there and if you look you can break it down by year so if you look at a previous year let's look at 2020 so there's going to be a few more transactions in 2020 that's because i held artemis high income fund there you can see it is down there artemis high income fund which was a monthly bond paying fund i sold that out because i didn't see a future in bonds i sold that and i bought shopify with it pending orders stands the reason what that is if you've got any orders that are pending it will show them there account administration so there's a lot in here that's really useful so first of all on the right hand side you can see what the breakdown is of your cash of your equities of your funds so in my portfolio i'm 67 percent funds and i'm 32 percent equities i've got zero percent cash for, as a as a relative to the portfolio because I've got £4.87 in there. Here on the right hand side, view history of fees charged. So this is a key one in terms of understanding what it is you're paying to hold this account. So this is gonna show you £4.83, £4.38, £4.54, whatever the cost is of the account every month, it's gonna show you all the transactions 
of your fees. So you need to be able to keep on top of that and make sure you're aware of what the fees are. Right, and this is one of the imp most important ones that you need to be aware of. And this is fee collection options. So this is what I talked about at the beginning. So if you click on this one, this is where you decide how your fees are paid. So you can see I've got it set up as collect fees outside account where possible. So when those four pound 83 pence charges come in every month, I've got it set up so it collects the fees from outside the account. I've got it set up so it doesn't take the cash from the cash on hand in the ISA. It doesn't take the cash from selling off my funds and creating and generating cash that way. It takes it from outside of the account, which is my fund and share account. So if you click on this button, here to change things you can have it all sorts of different ways um we're not going to go through what the different ways are but basically you can have it coming out of your um the cash that you have on the hand in your iso or you can have it selling off your funds or all sorts of different bits and bobs but the best way for me is to have it as collect fees outside account where possible down here a little bit further down is a minimum cash balance which is a recommendation in terms of the minimum amount of cash you should have on hand in the account to make sure that you're covering your fees so that you don't again sell off any funds and again at the bottom another one that's really important collecting fees from your investment so if you've done it all wrong but make sure you do have this one on because this one will at least tell you they're about to sell your funds in order to pay the fees and you can quickly go in there and fix it here you can change your income instruction i'm not going to click on that because you'll see all my banking details if you do but if you go in there you can change what happens to the dividends you can have them reinvested you can have them reinvested as a certain amount so once you reach a certain threshold so once you reach 10 pound in terms of dividends they could be reinvested or you can have it set up to be paid out if you're in the fortunate enough position that your portfolio is now maintaining your lifestyle and it is generating an income for you you can change in there so that the dividends are paid directly out to you what a day that will be now another fee that i need to mention with hargreaves lansdowne here is if you're a dividend investor with hargreaves lansdowne they're going to charge you to reinvest again unfortunately so you can see here there is a minimum of one pound a maximum of ten pound to reinvest those dividends so it does cost you and actually as a percentage that could be quite a bit obviously if you're a high roller it's going to be nothing but it, but you know for us level guys for me anyway that's going to cost you a few quid so you just need to make sure that you've got that set up how you want it and that is why if you look back in my portfolio you can see that all the funds i have are accumulation 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 what does that mean it basically means that all of those funds pay dividends and those dividends are automatically reinvested back into the fund no charge no cost it happens in the background if you have an income based fund all of these funds have income equivalents they're not going to get them reinvested directly they're going to go back into your cash on hand and then it's probably going to there's a minimum amount to reinvest them again it becomes a pain you might not do it therefore the, the fund might not grow as well as you might like so if in the beginning you are in your wealth generation mode make sure the funds that you pick are all accumulation funds transaction history again speaks for itself it's all the transactions that have happened on the account since you've owned it you can go right the way back however you want you can custom pick a period you can do 90 days last 30 days whatever it is at the moment as you can see because i've not invested much into it it is pretty much just the fees there is here a reinvested dividend for aviva so that is a transaction i can see as well uh, but there's not much going on in there because this is not an account that i'm actively playing around with at the moment monthly savings plan is your direct debits into the account what it is you're planning on putting in every month and how you're going to split that across the holdings that you have so you can amend all of that in here got it as zero because i'm not putting anything into this anymore because it's a previous isa but you can manipulate and change all of your settings in terms of there in terms of how you want that distribution of your cash to be going into your funds this is the add money tab i've just clicked on and it just takes you into here it's basically for adding more cash in simple as that and the withdraw money tab at the end is for taking your cash out and don't forget with an isa again anything you take out that's it you've lost your opportunity to put it back in again so you can put twenty thousand pound a year into an isa at the moment and if you put twenty thousand pound in and you take out a thousand pounds you can't then put another thousand pound back in that opportunity is lost it's gone so anything you take out is gone so please don't get caught out by that one and deal now is basically where another place where you can buy more stocks and shares and funds and whatever it is you like so if you look down here you can go t-e-s-l-a if you want to buy tesla search for that now make sure on this side here it's the correct ticker symbol otherwise you could be buying the wrong thing so once you go in there you then press this arrow button you can then make a decision whether you want to buy or sell the amount you want to buy whether you want to do it in pounds or you want to buy a certain amount of shares so if i was to put in there i want three shares of tesla i want it 
in the amount of shares. Press deal, I haven't got enough money, so it's not gonna let me do it. You do not have sufficient funds available in your stocks and shares either for this order to proceed. But if you did, you'd be away. All right, another thing I wanna show you is this, it's pretty good. So if you click here, portfolio analysis. So I'm back on the homepage here where you can see the accounts. Portfolio analysis. And it gives you the function to press this button here, analyze my entire portfolio. That will work away in the background and it'll give you this. It'll give you a breakdown of your allocation. So we saw it before a minute ago in terms of this one. We saw something very similar to this, but what we didn't see here is this. And this is a weighting as percentage of all of your allocations. So whatever you've got in each stock or each fund. At the moment, the biggest one I've got is Tesla. And that's because of gains alone. It's nearly a, It nearly became a 10 bagger for me the other day. I bought Tesla back in March 2020. I bought 300 quids worth in my trading 212 account. That grew to about a grand, so it was a three bagger then. I moved it across into my Hargreaves Lansdowne portfolio to protect any growth, because that's when I had an ISA with Hargreaves Lansdowne. It's now, it was now worth what, two and a half grand, something like that. So maybe, hopefully soon enough, that will be a 10 bagger for me. So that's a load of bits and bobs covered in terms of Hargreaves Lansdowne. If there's any specifics you do want me to go into, please let me know below in the comments and I will. And if there's any other questions about anything that I've gone through today, again, please let me know below. If you're interested in seeing my free trade portfolio where I'm trying to raise as much cash as I possibly can by beating the market, watch this video here.